Hey, welcome to the show. I'm Yanni Rude. And I'm just Terrell. You ever been out swearing over her two people having crazy conversations? Well, we are those people. We've been having these conversations since college. Yep, it's the Regular Guys Random Thoughts podcast, Married at First Sight, Season 17, Fort, oh, Fort Worth, Denver, Colorado. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Be sure to like, subscribe, rate, and leave a review. <laughs> if we can figure out where we are, first of all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. Like this, It said Married at First Season. I'm like, we just got to edit that before, <laughs> after this. But it just threw me off, and I'm like, uh fort worth where were we last week okay (laughs) oh my god man what a reunion right i mean this was as bad as we expected it to be but it's probably the best part of the entire season to be fair well it was so disappointing I was expecting a little bit more but all we're getting is you lied no we lied no you Mm -hmm. lied no you lied Mm -hmm. It, it it's so annoying watching these folks and watching the, the uh, I hate to say this word, but the cattiness of the ladies who just all hate the guys, minus mm-hmm. Chloe, and mm-hmm. then the guys and their disdain for the ladies, minus Michael. It's just, <laughs> it's just a mess. It's just a mess. And you're hearing really a lot of the same that we've heard mm-hmm. over the last four or five weeks because they all didn't work out anyway. Yep. You know, it's... Um... And by the way, uh, you know, I wish I could say that, but he's actually drinking water. Says, Tell's drinking already. <laughs> yeah, water. <laughs> <laughs> but I like how you try to throw it out there. Well, it's written wrong. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> Just threw me off. It's not because of drinking. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, James says, wait, let me get my pink dress. <laughs> <laughs> CXM, you're right. This reunion was cringy. It really was. It was like watching toddlers. It was like being in a daycare and going, jeez. I hope they grow up because as we can see, some people don't. No, they don't. But yet mm-hmm. they think they're more mature than the others. Yeah. I mean, they have the ladies to me had this holier than thou, mm-hmm. you know, attitude towards the guys. And it, it, it's just a mess. I mean, I felt bad for Kevin Frazier. I couldn't imagine having to sit down. Could you imagine if you and I were the moderators of this? We probably would get, we, we probably wouldn't last. We wouldn't, yeah, we wouldn't make it to <laughs> part two. Last. We like the hell with this. Um, yeah. <laughs> Michelle says, um, the reunion, the guys dodged a bullet, in my opinion. You know what? You're absolutely right. The women came out there with this whole mentality that they dodged a bullet, but, uh, and, and like Brandy said, this reunion was exhausting. By the way, she likes to tweet, says, hey, I'm just here for Terrell. Thank you. I get it. The just and Terrell in all caps. Did you see that? Did you catch I see that? that? Okay, let's make it there. You know. See what she did there. I like it. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> Make me feel special now. I feel all good and warm inside. Yeah, but thank you. thank God, because you were coming on like a little, like you were one of the women in pink early before we got on here. It's been a day. <laughs> it's been a day. I have been gaslit. I've been manipulated all day at work today, just like the ladies of Married at First Sight. <laughs> we're going to put you on the left side of Kevin. <laughs> Oh, my God. Well, look, man, um, here's the thing that we, we noticed, right? Everybody had the same title when this thing came on. Um, and, you know, everybody was an ex. And if you notice, um, it was all the women, well, minus one, dressed in pink, mm-hmm. right? And um, Kevin even asking, well, you know, why uh, they're all in pink? And, you know, Lauren, Emily, Claire, and Becca saying that they wore it to show um, that they're standing strong in solid solidarity and that they're more than a character on a TV screen. Mm, yeah, no, you're a character. All right. Like a cartoon character, <laughs> all of them. Uh, and then Chloe, as gracious as she is, she says, Hey, you know, these ladies formed a bond mm-hmm. and I, I totally respect that. And that they're doing their thing, which is a nice way of saying, Hey, these ladies are mutually crazy. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to let crazy do crazy. And I'm going to sit over here in my purple dress. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the, the thing about it is I noticed the looks they were giving because they all kind of smirked when she said it. Because she gave a very politically correct answer, right? Like, Chloe is a politician um, or was in another life. Plain mm-hmm. and simple. Because her answer was just like, hmm. And then Kevin even saying like this. This is the most contentious cast we've ever had because none of the couples are sitting together. Well, actually one couple was sitting together yep and, but he and didn't even mention that one he just said all the couples aren't sitting together 
because that they were the last couple mm -hmm. that came in late. So the original group all set separate, although Orion sat on the side he needed to be on. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, outside <laughs> stop of that, it, stop it. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> but it, I mean, it, they have been a very contentious group. And when he started saying that, I was thinking mm -hmm. he's going to say toxic. And I'm like, okay, now you're going to get eat up on mm -hmm. by all the woke people. But they have been very contentious. They he's have. 100%, and they still are. And he said that since the cameras stopped, it's like gotten worse. Yeah. For these folks, where most people, they would have moved on. Mm -hmm. Now, very true. Um, you know, it's a. Uh... <sighs> the way he kind of handled this at times and i think uh she likes to tweet says it best kevin looked like he had to hold back his blackness a few times <laughs> <laughs> i was trying to find the best way to put it and I, I saw this and i'm like you know what that's it that's it right there that's it because <laughs> yeah, you know how many times he want to be like ninja please <laughs> i watched the season <laughs> saw that <laughs> he almost and, and apparently he gets into it in, in part two but you know well before we get all there let's get to where we are in this one because um you know i feel as we get to uh it, it seems the focus kind of went on and we'll just do this by the couples as they came through because it went back and forth quite a bit whether all together then they came out separately but claire and cameron right um mm -hmm. one of the things we did notice early on is that apparently the women got together and decided that cameron was the main villain of this story, right or wrong? I, I believe they did, which blew my mind because I'm like, he was only on the show, mm -hmm. half of it. Mm -hmm. So you're saying that he was the puppet master behind the scenes, like mm -hmm. in Mission Impossible, he's the dude in the ceiling yeah. with the computer telling all the guys what to do and they were doing it. Apparently. Uh, yeah, you're giving him way too much credit, but he was the antichrist of the group, apparently. How did you like how he tried to clear his name talking about um, the wedding night when to discuss what they wanted a partner and he got he want, what he wanted, but Claire didn't? Well, I, I think he messed up regardless because mm -hmm. once they had that conversation, he said that I asked for somebody tall and slender. Mm -hmm. That And we all know that Cameron, we used to joke, remember getting the season, is he on the spectrum? Because mm -hmm. you don't say that to somebody. Hey, you're beautiful. I asked for somebody that looked a totally different than this, mm. but I like this. Mm. You know, that's not a compliment. And so I don't think there's anything he can say to clear that up. But the way he countered and went at Claire mm -hmm. with the things that she said and, mm -hmm. and about her ex and that she's not attracted to him, that's where it got very contentious and it got well, fun. The interesting thing about that is, and you see this a little bit later when they're out there together with just, it's just them and Kevin, and Claire kind of tells him herself, right? Because in the same topic of um, the tall and slender and being attracted, because she was like, yeah, I was attracted to him. And it, but she wasn't attracted to him, right? Because, um, okay, so she tells herself, I said, she, wasn't, she only uh, wasn't attracted to, to um, Kevin when he said he wasn't attracted to her. And then Kevin's like, so did he actually say that? Well, no, no, no. Well, you know, he said that he likes tall and slender, and that's not me. So I decided that that's not that he means he's not attracted. But the problem is, fellas never, ever, ever answer that question. Mm -mm. Like, what's your type? Um, you. You know. <laughs> <laughs> you. That's you the never. answer. Always. You're on a date with somebody. So what's your normal type? You. You. <laughs> <laughs> you never answer that question. That's, that, is, that is that black hole of can't get out of again. The, the sunken place you can get into is that right there. And I'm glad that Kevin had the clip mm -hmm. when Claire was really talking about how she wasn't all that attracted mm -hmm. to Cameron with the lady. So, yes, she lied. And I like the fact that she admitted at least yeah. when he made that comment, okay, then she shut down. Mm -hmm. So there was nothing he could have done after that. She had totally shut down. Right. But I think they're both lying. Mm -hmm. I, th I think they're both telling, they're both telling a little bit of the truth, but they're both also lying. But Claire comes off like such a victim in that one on one with her, with Cameron and, and Kevin. And then, of course, she breaks out the WWTs. Of course. Right. Because that's that's how you seal the deal. You can't do it without tears, <laughs> you know, but Cameron is awkward, right? There's no way that he could have dug himself out of that hole that he put himself into mm -hmm. on night one. 
But let's be honest, even Kevin didn't believe, I mean, because you see a lot of people saying here um, that, you know, what they're all lying and also that Claire's full of it and that she was lying, she wasn't attracted to him. Even Kevin didn't believe it when she said she was attracted to him from the beginning. He, I, and it looked like they cut out what he was about to say because he was like, hold up, but we, and then it went to something else. <laughs> He's, but like he's a, ninja, please. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, snitch, we watch the show. <laughs> you know, Kevin even asked Claire, Look, do you ha are you like taking no responsibility for the demise of your relationship? Like, is it all him? And in her eyes, yes, <laughs> it, it, it's all him. None yeah. of this was her fault. This was all his idea. He had the whole game plan of how they're going to get out of it. Mm -hmm. And then even Cameron was earlier, but he tried to say the, the the strategy was the religion thing. Yeah, and he was going to use the religion as the reason they don't they don't click. Mm -hmm. I think Claire's full of crap, mm -hmm. um, but also I think Cameron's full of crap too. Okay, why? I think he's full of crap because all the things that he was. This is where I realized I think he's lying and full of crap is when. Kevin was trying to ask them, which I'm sure the experts were like, can you see if anybody wants to try this again? <laughs> <laughs> we need a win, Kevin. Come on, if anybody can do it. When he was asking him, would he still want to you know, pursue something with it? And he said, yes. I was like, yeah. what? Yeah. How do you say that you would still want to pursue something with her? Okay. After yeah. everything that you've gone through. Here's where we disagree because I felt like he threw a curveball saying that he's willing to try again. And it was a great chess move. Why? Because of what happened next, right? He know if I he knows this. If I say yes, I want to try again. Kevin is gonna ask Claire, and when he asks Claire, Claire now has to come out and say she's seen someone, and I think that's what Cameron wanted her to say all along, and that's why he said he was going to try again. He knew she wasn't going to, but what he is, knew that. what does he get out of that? Like he just wants her to finally tell the truth somewhere. <laughs> but I, I just like what is, what does he get out of that? You know, if you if you play that chess game, there's he's not about to take her king now. No, that... but think about this. She had admitted earlier, before that, that they had recently talked about getting back together. She said it. So it's the way that he's he's been playing this game with her anyway, right? Just like she's been playing that game with him. She didn't like him. We know that. We kind of figured that. Um, but it's like. He goes, okay, how can I win this? This is my chance to say I win this round. And that's what it was. Remember, he said he was never going to say yes on, on decision day. So what did it matter? Even though he said, well, if you say yes, I will. Then he was like, yeah, I'm not going to. <laughs> so, this, look, this thing was just, again, kindergarten, high school, whatever you want to call it, it was that bad. It really yeah. was. It was. Uh, I'm happy Claire seen someone else. I wonder if he's black because apparently she likes likes the coffee in her mm -hmm. cream. So I'm curious, but I have a hard time trying to believe that theory that Cameron was playing chess with this whole move. Mm -hmm. But I do think that they're both still lying. I just it's hard for me to say who's lying more. <laughs> that's just, that's just, <laughs> I just want to make sure you see this. Yeah, yeah, I saw it. I saw it. I just ignored it. But I saw that. But it's hard for me to see who's lying more because I yeah. feel like when Claire lies, that's when she breaks the tears out and tries to, yeah. to pull on the heartstrings. Mm -hmm. But I just don't believe either one of them. I think that they're both full of crap. And hey. Well, Kimba says the look on Claire's face was priceless when Cam was saying he wanted to try again because that's one of those things that... Like, again, it's the shock value. He knows he's thrown off because she knows that he knows he's, she's seen somebody else, right? And 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 like um, Jocelyn says, um, I think Cam said that to make Claire own up to not being attractive. Yes, he wants her to own her own shit. He knew she'd never say yes, let's get back together again. Or even let's try. Because even, think about it, all the things she said leading up to when he went to the hospital, she still says, well, yeah, well, I tried to go see him, but he didn't want me to come. And I'm like, okay, who's... I can't tell who's telling the truth. Me either. But I will say, I'm more likely to lean towards Cameron because, yeah, I, think about this. She said, she got upset about the fact that he said, oh, I'm surprised, I forgot that you were here. You chose to take that negative 
Or is right. it could be that you were, I was so comfortable with you that I forgot that you were here. Now, I can see yes. how women can take that wrong. As men, you got exactly what I was saying. Right. And there are probably women in the chat like, hell no, you never say that to me. You better well, know I'm here. <laughs> I think when you're dealing with somebody who's sensitive, maybe some self-esteem issues, Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's probably why Claire felt that way. Mm -hmm. But I'm disappointed in Cameron because he said that he didn't want her to come visit him because she kept canceling all the time. Right. To me, why didn't you come out with printed screenshots mm -hmm. and just come with the receipts right there? Because he's, I have the text. Show it. Mm -hmm. Show the print. Give it to Kevin. Kevin, put this on camera. Here's what happened. Yeah. Then I would believe Cameron a little bit more. But yeah. I think that he's lying as well. And maybe they deserve each other. Maybe that's why the experts put them both together. Like y'all are both manipulative liars yeah. who gaslight each other. Y'all be great. <laughs> now, Betty B says, Cameron lost me when he defined gaslighting to Brennan before he went on set with Claire. He giggled when he said to put a little truth into the lies and then they will never be able to deny. Well, I think that's what he was saying the ladies were doing. Right. But but notice, see, because I got that, too. Right. However, Betty saw the same thing and heard it differently. Yeah. That's what he was saying that the ladies were doing. <laughs> what really made me laugh is when he was like <laughs> almost tried to define gaslighting to Emily, mm -hmm. which is gaslighting. <laughs> <laughs> he gaslit Emily by saying, oh, so the definition of gaslighting, then, right? Yeah, <laughs> like, exactly. Damn, Cameron. <laughs> yeah, but that was that was smooth. Yeah, that was smooth. Um, and uh, yeah, Betty, I did see that too. Betty did say Mavs fan brought the text today again. And like someone else said in, in those comments, I can create text from anybody. You just yeah. change the name and do what you want with it. I'm just saying, I'm not saying that it's not true, but that's why. And that's one of the reasons why every time I bring up something like that, tells like, well, I don't know for sure. Right. And that's exactly why. Cause we don't, we want to believe it's his text. Then we'll, they're his text. If we want to believe she's lying, then they're not his text. So which way was it? Um, by the way, this whole thing about forgetting she was there, Michelle says, like I told you, now him saying I forgot you were here would turn me off. That's odd. How do you forget? His point was that I slept so well Thank that you. I forgot you were there. Wait, no, you know, no. Say it again. Say it again. Go ahead. His point was he slept <laughs> so well that he forgot you were there. You know, the first time you sleep next to somebody, mm -hmm. you're trying to worry about, okay, I don't want to take the covers. Right. You know, I don't want to pass gas. Because exactly. you know, all the little things that you normally do when you're sleeping, you Not know, by covers. yourself. Yeah, mm -hmm. not by yourself. You just don't even think, you know, you're worried about that. Mm -hmm. But when you sleep next to somebody where it feels like you don't, mm -hmm. you didn't realize they were even there, that means that's a comfortable sleep. That's somebody you want to sleep next to again. Yeah, that's yeah. some good sleep. Yeah, see, exactly. We understand. <laughs> now they're going to say we're gaslighting. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Stop gaslighting us. Yanni and Terrell, <laughs> we know what we heard. <laughs> oh my goodness. Next couple, Becca and Austin, man. Becca says she doesn't know what was real or not between her and Austin. And um, she was just doing what she wanted, what, what he wanted her to do because she wanted the marriage to work. So again, nothing is her fault. At all. She was hypnotized, mm -hmm. caught up in the trance of Austin and the backwards ball caps. And she just followed suit with whatever he said. I call BS um, mm -hmm. on any of that. Now, was Austin playing for the cameras? Yes. I think we realized that, that he was. He was really cautious of how the camera was going to put, you know, what light he was going to yeah. be put into. But when Becca was trying to say that he's doing this for, uh, you know, Instagram and, and fans and subscribers, to me, there's nothing about Austin that says he's that ambitious. Right. That he's going to use this opportunity oh, to yeah. build up a following. I was like, Sorry. who? <laughs> what, what's he going to do? Have an Instagram um, where his focus is his hats? Yeah. Well, what's he really going to do with that? How is he going to grow his platform <laughs> from this? You know, so I, but I think Becca's just, it doesn't matter what Austin says. Becca is so, A, feels so rejected, even still feels so rejected that it really wouldn't matter. But again, she took no accountability or responsibility, and it's all Austin's fault. She likes to tweet, says, what was real is that he really wasn't that into you and and your pH was probably off. Um, <laughs> damn. I Wrong. I would say that. Damn. Wrong. Ariadne says, Becca was digmatized without the... <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Maybe they've done some things, you know. <laughs> well, uh, he did say they did some things. He said we did a lot of things. May not have gone all the way, but we did some things. So don't act like we didn't. And okay, here's something I can probably understand from Austin in this point, right? Because remember, he gave that six month number. He said, I just threw that number out. I just, because she asked for a number, right? Right. But um, <laughs> Black Tornado said she was just matized. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Austin said it takes him a while to go all the way there physically, sexually with somebody. But when he was almost there, then all of a sudden it just became a barrage of questions of why not. And he didn't say it was from her, even though she was included in that, but from the experts. Mm -hmm. Why aren't you doing this? Because remember, they kept trying to force them to do this stuff. And it's kind of because we had a lot of these questions in the chat throughout the entire season about. If the roles were reversed, would y'all still be trying to force her to have sex with him? Mm hmm Yeah, I, Becca seems like the type that probably would start talking in the middle and kind of ruin the mood. <laughs> I can see that. <laughs> I can see it. Yes. But here's, here's where Austin, uh, here's where I don't agree with him at all when it comes to that. Yeah, everybody kept asking and everybody kept doing this stuff, but yet he was doing all the things to make it seem like he was into her. Mm -hmm. and you're not kissing her or you're he's kissing her and all that stuff but if you're this religious person and yeah. you want to wait three to six months whatever your number is normally in dating well you're married mm -hmm. this is what god wants you to do right why still hold back from that this is your wife you've said that that they should do it on the first night from the very first time you watched, yeah. the very first season you watched, it was like season 13, you said they all should give it up the first night. Yeah, why not? <laughs> because well, I'm mean, comfortable. Well, I, I understand that. It's not so like, hey, you know, fan, you know, the reception, let's go back and get naked, but at least day two, day three, you know, why not? You've been giving it up to other people before who you think, never you asked assume. you to marry you. Mm -hmm. They're not virgins, so yeah, they okay, slept sure. with somebody that didn't marry yeah. them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You got a person who married you sight unseen. Mm -hmm. Why not? True. True. But you're not going to go a whole eight weeks laying next to the same person. Nine is Brendan and Emily, but everyone else <laughs> and Cameron and Claire and Orion and Lord. But they laid next to each other for eight weeks. <laughs> Yeah, you know, when the producer date situation came up, what did you think about this one? Because Austin said, hey, I didn't invite you because um, it was after decision day and we never discussed going out to celebrate. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, hey, that, that threw me for a loop. I hit pause and went, okay, let me think about that for a second. <laughs> what happened? Yeah, I, I was... I, as soon as that came out of his mouth, I just put my head down. I'm like, Austin, why would you say something like that? We yeah. just we just decided to stay together and continue the relationship. This is awesome. I'm going to go celebrate alone mm -hmm. with some my friends mm -hmm. and the producer that he didn't mention. <laughs> and this is the other thing that I think guys need to realize. Once you lie and you get busted, mm -hmm. I say break up. Right. Because she's going to bring up that lie about the producer Oh, every single time. Yeah. Every single time. And you and the producer and you lied about it. You hung out with the producer and you lied about it. Mm -hmm. That is never going to go away. So if you're going to do something that's going to be that bad, don't lie. Just break up because mm -hmm. you're caught and it's never going to work out. And I don't understand why people don't realize when certain questions are asked, that means the answer is already known. Mm -hmm. The way she asked the question, I was like, oh, boy. <laughs> you know, the very first time, oh boy, this is not going to be good. And it wasn't. It wasn't for him, right? So, <laughs> it's like, to your point, though, and I think um, it might have been the great philosopher Christopher Rockenstein who talked about if, <laughs> if your girl's like, we break it up. He said, good, you got off easy. But as soon as you hit the door, she's like, hold up. <laughs> Let's try again. <laughs> so don't turn around. Keep running. <laughs> because that just means payback. And you're right. Because they'll never forget. If you get caught, you will never hear the end of it. Ever. Ever. <laughs> Ever. Ever. 
Five years down the line, hey, babe, let's go get some ice cream. Why? Did that producer like ice cream? Is <laughs> exactly. that why you won't get ice cream? I mean, it's always going to be there. There's no way he can get over that. Jay say so. 44 years later. I know you wanted that producer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is that why you want our grandchild to be a producer? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's why you named our daughter this, because that was the producer's name. I knew it. Uh, yeah. I mean, he that was a bad statement for him to make and mm -hmm. i like how becca called him out mm -hmm. you know and this was the strong confident becca that we saw when she called him out about the producer like all that yeah. most of the season she was crying and yeah all this other stuff this is the strong confident becca that that i think we all liked in the very beginning so i'm glad that she's kind of back to herself and austin at, at from that moment on with that interview with kevin fraser mm -hmm. he looked like a uh a puppy that just got scolded. I mean, he just... You know why. Because he tried to come for Kevin, and Kevin shut him down smooth. <laughs> like, hold up now. Ninja, please. <laughs> hey, Austin, I'll fold you up. Okay? I just want you to know, I'll fold you up. So anyway, Becca... And, and put you in a hat. <laughs> yeah. Well, Kevin was funny, because he's listening to Becca, and when, like, Becca was dropping dimes, this is what Kevin, he'd be like, oh. Austin. <laughs> Yo, know, Kevin came to bring it this time around. Miss Sophie says, hey, the women thought they would change the men's minds with sex. We've said this before. Women always think they can change a man. Always. Well, there's some truth to what she's saying because sometimes, you know, the sex might make you put up with stuff you normally wouldn't put up with. <laughs> Ordinarily, you'd be like, no, but then you're like, mm. I've, I've never understood people who allow good sex to be what puts you in bad situations. Sometimes. I've never that. I've I mean, sometimes, that. even if you're not together, but you get that, you know, no, late night. The desire hey, big for it, I understand. But just because this person, this, yeah, I'm just saying, no. Hey, we're, we're all the same. Even. <laughs> Even in our young days, you knew, hey, we, we wanted the, the physical, but you know that there's stuff that comes with it mm -hmm. afterwards. And mm -hmm. so you, the question is, is the juice going to be worth the squeeze? Mm -hmm. After a couple shots, I can deal with that, that high-pitched voice. I can deal with all the different things that might annoy other people in the room. I can deal with all that. <laughs> <laughs> Boom! <laughs> you know, alcohol has a way of putting you in places you don't need, have no place being. Yeah, yeah. absolutely right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Um, Chloe and Michael, the only couple that was not ready to kill each other at the reunion and actually sat next to each other. Um, there's a whole lot more to Chloe um, and the crew as to why she didn't hang out with them. And I think uh, we already kind of knew this, right? Mm -hmm. But what we didn't know, or maybe we didn't, it just kind of, I, I just kind of glossed past it, was the big issue, one of the issues with them was the whole last name. Taking Michael's yeah, last name. That was new to me. Okay, I, okay, I thought it was just me. No, that was new to me. I hadn't heard that. Mm -hmm. And even, you know, Michael was trying to defend that because he had, what she said is that Michael told her you don't have to worry about taking my last name. As mm -hmm. if to say, hey, don't worry about it. We're not getting married. <laughs> but see, this is where Chloe took that and went, yeah. And so this is why I figured this. And just same with, with me and his mom. And when I figured, oh, well, you know what? That's why you said no, because you didn't plan on staying married anyway. And it's like, sometimes you can jump to conclusions that are not good. I mean, you may be right, but maybe you did jump to a conclusion too. And maybe you're wrong in that space. Yeah, what's, what shocks me, though, is that for the amount of hours that Michael and Chloe probably talked, mm -hmm. why didn't Chloe just dig into that? Mm -hmm. After he said, hey, can we revisit something that you said yesterday when I was asking you about last names? Mm -hmm. And then maybe they got some clarity, because maybe it seems like she just stopped at that point. And then when he said about not telling her, his mom, she just accepted it and stopped at that point right. without pushing. And I think maybe that's something Chloe needs to get better at is being a little bit more assertive mm -hmm. of what she wants and wants to understand. But Michael 
clarified that his point was that no i was saying that you can either take my last name mm -hmm. you could hyphenate you can keep your last name right you don't have to do the social norm right of that but again i feel like maybe they missed that in a conversation which surprises me with as much as these two talk to each other mm -hmm. i would have thought they'd have to me it seemed like they would cover all their bases right you would think so um because they, they definitely did a, a whole lot um now michael when it came to the whole mother part right because this is something that i think um uh I, I kind of put these two together with the last name and this because it, it, I, I think they kind of clumped together, right? And it has to because they had a shortened time in this. Um, and like Sandy says, Chloe didn't jump to a conclusion. She said it occurred to her on decision day. Right. But mm -hmm. I mean, of course, when he said no, she, she had to. But the thing about the mother not being introduced to his mother, he said, hey, yeah, I didn't tell my mother. I told my family, I didn't say I didn't tell my family. Now he didn't say how many family members he told. We'll have to ask him that. But he did say, I told my family, I just didn't tell my mom. Because she took it so badly the first time, I wasn't gonna do this to her again. Let me make sure this is gonna work first. Okay, we have to ask him about that because mm -hmm. you and I have family members. Mm -hmm. And I know if I tell a couple, it's gonna get to my mom anyway. Right, that's what I said. Yeah, like, you know, my family, someone's going to talk. Whether you wanted to or not. Hey, uh, I talked to Terrell, and he said <laughs> he got married. Do you know about that? And my phone would be ringing immediately. So how do you tell a lot of your family mm -hmm. except your mom? Right. So he's going to have to meet, you know, ask him to see if he can clarify that oh, for indeed. us. But I thought that was a little odd, too. Nikki B says Michael provided no real answer as to why he said no. That was problematic. Now, he said that it was not clear why he said no it was not her fault it's not anything about her you know it's not you it's me was the answer basically um and he said he didn't want to try because he didn't think they built a strong enough foundation to try make sense to michael it does <laughs> it's, 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 it's crystal clear to to the rest of us no and and here's here's why they're catching so much help mm -hmm. They barely had four weeks compared right. to everyone else that had eight weeks. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, they didn't have as much time as everybody else to determine you build a foundation. But that's why you say, let's continue to stay married. And then you see, and then if they would have divorced by the reunion, mm -hmm. we well, that would make sense to us. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't make sense how you don't feel you have everything you need to know in four weeks. Who would? Yeah, That's why it's called Married at First Sight. And mm -hmm. then you stay married, see if it continues to work. And if it does, win. If right. it doesn't. You end it. So that's why what he said makes no sense to me. Now, Miss Sophie points this out, says Chloe also said she would not have gotten married knowing it was a second try. Because remember, we had a big talk about this, with whether she should have been told ahead of time or not. And the, the good thing for Michael in that space is as soon as they cross the aisle and he's like, all right, it's legal. Did we sign yet? Hey, by the way, did you know you are? <laughs> <laughs> hey, no. Hey, number two. Can I talk to you for a second? <laughs> I said, oh, you watch Star Trek The Next Generation too? No, never seen it before in my life, but you are number two. Be like, Deuce Club, Deuce Club. <laughs> now, Alyssa B says, Chloe was hiding a lot of her true feelings, just like Dr. Pia said. Did you see that too? Uh, yes, I, I think I did. Because a lot of things that she brought up in front of Kevin, to mm -hmm. me, these are things like, why didn't you ask some of this stuff and dig deeper into it? Right. Throughout that four week marriage. But also, I think this is why people feel like they weren't ever going to stay married in the first place. Right. It Because to me, it just. I just don't buy that they mm -hmm. plan to stay married. I think that they got another person in because they had the five couples. Mm -hmm. They budgeted for the five couples. They already paid for the space mm -hmm. and everything else. We got to use it. Yep. Let's see if we can get some out of this. So I just personally don't feel like this was a real thing. For them, and even though when Chloe was telling the other girls, when, when Kevin was asking about sex, that I don't believe they really did it. I'll say it. Michael can, can yell at me. I'll, I'll say it. I think it was all for TV. Didn't really happen. It was all a blur? <laughs> it was all, all a blur. <laughs> yeah. Trini says, Chloe was acting as well. It's been a year. How many teens has she fostered or animals rescued? She did not want him. Jay Say So says, uh, smooth ass Mike talked his way in and out of marriage with the suaveness of a Mac. If you're gonna have anybody break up with you, have Michael do it. Like that could be his <laughs> that could be his job. That could be a side hustle where you, you rent him out as a consultant. He can fly out to whatever city and be like, hey, 
Mm-hmm. Nikki B, how you doing? Michael, <laughs> came to talk to you. So you know how you've been dating so-and-so? Yeah, about that. <laughs> <laughs> and say it in a way that Nikki would be like, wow, I guess he wasn't all that interested. <laughs> and be fine. <laughs> now, the question was asked, and Michael said that he um, he does regret saying no, but also says he wishes he was in a better place to say yes. So that was really, yeah, I regret it, but no, I really don't. And then Chloe, Chloe is like, you know, well, our levels of commitment are different. And uh, she has no regret, and she's moved on. She sounded like she was done and she was gone. Yeah, and she said, hey, they still have a respect for each other. And she just said, hey, Michael's not my person. Right. Yeah, and that's totally fine. But I would like more clarity what Michael is saying. When he says that, yeah, you know, I regret saying no, but I wish I, you know, had more stuff to say. You don't regret saying no. I feel like that that doesn't seem like the Michael that we've watched, that he would regret his choice because he seems to think things through. Right. A lot and in depth. Now, Layla has a very interesting point. I'm glad I glad I'm glad we saw this before we moved on, right? Because it's this interesting revelation that Chloe had left the apartment due to feeling Michael was not all in. But added, she would have stayed had he asked her to. Do you believe her? I see you shaking your head. Well, here's why I'm shaking my head is there's nothing more annoying than that. <laughs> I knew that would there's irritate nothing you. more. There's <laughs> nothing more irritating than that. You know, well, I left. Well, why did you leave? Well, you said that you want me to go, but I wanted you to fight to stay. Yeah. Why? Oh. Just say what you want. Yes. And say what you mean, but don't throw out that because I mean, I think Michael in that situation was trying to be considerate and thoughtful to be like, hey, I get it. You miss your dogs. They're old and sick. You want to spend some time with them. Mm -hmm. This has been a lot. We've had a little space to ourselves and you want to decompress. Hey, Mm -hmm. I respect that. And I feel like that's where Michael is coming from. But then for her to come back and say, I wish he would have fought harder for me to stay. I disagree with that. That's like picking a fight just for makeup sex. Yeah, don't. And I always always tell women this. Guys are idiots. We don't get hints. Say what you feel. Say what you want. Don't BS around. You're not going to get what you want. Yeah. Michael's probably like, hey, you can go home whenever you want. I got Penelope over here. I'm good. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my God. After this, they had all the ladies out, right? Um, And Kevin asked them, what is that? What is at the core of all this anger. Did any of the women give you an answer that really made sense? No, the only answer I got is it's a bad batch of men. Mm -hmm. It's all the men's fault. Mm -hmm. They were manipulated. Mm -hmm. The guys started all this stuff. Mm -hmm. The guys were here for fame and fortune. They were here for love Mm -hmm. and marriage. I mean, no, I didn't get anything out of that. I like how Kevin didn't let the women just, you know, put all of that um, on on the men, and especially when they they said that it was a bad batch of men, and I I'm surprised I haven't seen any backlash on this part yet, just because when he says, well, since y'all are all these strong women, right, that you say you are, why did you just go along and not just say no? Well, it's a loaded question. Mm-hmm. Because it is, it really is. That's that I'm if you're these strong women, and then mm-hmm. what they did, mm-hmm. which I'm gonna get beat up for saying this, <laughs> is lacked accountability. Mm-hmm. They did. And what they did is say, hey, you know what? You're right, but they guys did this and they manipulated us to think this, and we were just going along with it, mm-hmm. and it wasn't their fault. Right. And they don't want to own any piece of it. At some point, you got to say, hey, you know what? I was delusional by week one week two week three i got hip to the game and that's when i stood up for myself right great that's fair but to say that they had no part in this yeah at all that's what makes me think they're also lying because i think you can say a relationship didn't work mm-hmm. people got to own their piece of it right but it can't just say that i mean ladies you tell me have you ever gone on a date and the guy tells why his relationship didn't work out it's all the women mm-hmm. it's never him do you still date that guy right no Similar way with guys. It was like every every guy I meet cheats. Well, hmm. <laughs> What's that, that say about you? Maybe it's just about the men that she's choosing. Whatever it is, but you got to own something. 
Yeah. But you can't just say it's never your fault. Even if you get fired from jobs, you got fired from the last five jobs because the company was assholes and the manager sucked. Mm-hmm. But it wasn't you. Well, that's that's an interesting point because a lot of people refuse to look in the mirror first, and that's the problem, right? Um, Miss Sophie says this is because they're really not that strong. Nikki B says these women agreed to this plan, so they're just as much to blame. Strong women, my ash. Um, and Michelle says misery loves company. The ladies seem so bitter. Why? Because that's what they all chose to do. Yeah. You yeah. know, they they would have their little group pity parties together. And no, I don't think they are strong women. Mm-hmm. Can they be strong with men when they need to be? Yes, but are they the way they, the way they portrayed themselves throughout mm-hmm. this whole season? I don't put them in the strong category at all, mm-hmm. and that's okay. Everybody doesn't have to be strong, yeah. but for them to be this bitter and really blame everything on the guys. And don't get me wrong, ladies, the guys are jacked up too. They, they are. got problems too. So I'm not mm-hmm. picking sides to say it's the guys' faults mm-hmm. and. I've heard the guys even say like, well, what did you do? Or right. what about you guys? So eh, I, just don't, I just didn't like it. Sinan's fan said, uh, did they really just sit on TV and admit that they let these basic men run over them? Wow. <laughs> That's you're easily manipulated. <laughs> Easy. Uh, and the funny thing about this, when they talk about the lack of physicality, right? Um, Lauren, call, Lauren called a season, uh, called it a season 17 desert. <laughs> Which is interesting because you and I thought that Lauren and Orion may be hooked up. Mm -hmm. And then after, that's when the whole drama happened. So apparently nothing. Yeah. I still not heard Emily say. Yeah. Nothing happened. Right. We haven't heard that because, like we said, they've tried to say that nobody had any. She did say, she did kind of say that, that, oh, you know, still trying to get some or whatever. But, um, the interesting thing was when Kevin tried to wrap up the segment, right? And the women were like, no, I thought we were going to cover more. And they're like, he's like, what? And he's like, well, you know, like the Cameron and Brendan situation. And Kevin was like, hey, I'm running this damn show. Now get the yeah. hell off my stage. Yeah. <laughs> I have an agenda. I have a way this is going to go, which tells they came prepared of things they were going to try to throw out about Cameron and Brennan and even Austin. Like they mm-hmm. got there. They're ready to throw some stuff out there. So maybe part two will, yeah. will be interesting. I doubt it. I know. <laughs> well, it's going to get a little spicy, especially when this woman gets on there. Emily and Brennan, man. Because, um, <laughs> you know, so when they first are on stage um, at the beginning of the episode, and she talks about that uh, deleting of diary cam footage. And Brennan's like, hey, look, man, did I, did I delete them or did I ask you to delete them? Was, w- is there a big enough difference there in that? Yes. He asked you to delete them compared to, give me your phone. Give me uh, your phone. Don't you ever do this again. Uh, take your take your diary cam back. I've already done what I need to do with it. He asked her and she chose to mm-hmm. delete it. But then now, the she did say she felt threatened because he's like, I'm not going to sleep until. Now, where was he and where was she when he said those words? Was she laid in bed, he's standing over her? I'm not going to sleep. Because if so, then she's right. That was threatening. Yeah, I, I'm not minimizing that. I, in an mm. outside of a reality show situation, I get it. Mm-hmm. In a reality show situation where there's cameras and there's crew and there's people right. all around you, mm-hmm. mm, I don't think you felt that threatened. Right. No. Um, now, Brenda says they live private lives, and Kevin's like, <laughs> let me show you all the kind of energy I'm on this season. <laughs> He's like, look, you can't have private lives on a reality TV dating show. What the hell's wrong with you, Ninja? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> did you see the contract that you signed? Did, did you, you read it? it? <laughs> did you actually read it? Uh, yeah, you can't have a private life in this deal. And, you know, he kept really trying to stress this. What I didn't like about Brennan, he's trying to make himself like the good guy because he wants to protect Emily and he kept saying that and she kept saying like look I'm a big girl I wish you would just say whatever this issue was or whatever and I still wish he would I, I that's what bothers me about him say it mm-hmm. now it's been all this time just say what we yeah. all think it is is you drink too much right you're a little too wild mm-hmm. I can't do it mm-hmm. something or we tried that one time back in the the Dominican Republic and it was trash <laughs> I'm not interested 
this rental has mouths. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Somebody it's, smoked in this rental before. I'm sorry. <laughs> you, know what, you know what's funny is we're normally not this bad when we talk about these people, but this show has been so awful. This season has been so bad that I don't feel bad about it at all. I don't feel guilty. Michael slides in the comments. If Emily slid in the comments, I wouldn't tone it down at all. If Brennan <laughs> slid in the comments, I wouldn't tone it down at all. I'm going to be like, no. For all we know, terrible. Michael is here right now because, you know, he, he's he's known to come in and not say anything because he doesn't want to distract from the show. So, you know, <laughs> he could be right here. And when we get him on, we're going to ask these questions. <laughs> so, we're going to um, let people in chat ask questions, too, because y'all have some they need to get answered. We deserve answers after what we went through watching mm-hmm. this season. We need some answers. <laughs> now, um, and Sandy says, hey, don't feel bad. Please continue. Trust me. We don't. <laughs> I'll be real. No, one bit. Um, now, Brennan admitted that they came up with a plan to take control of the narrative, right? Because he's like, look, we got to be able to, con- we're not going to allow the producers to determine what it is. Okay, the problem is you don't own the footage. And everything you do, sh- that's why he kept getting so irritated when they were on camera and when Dr. P was there. Because he's like, woman, we talked about this. <laughs> you can see it. And now it makes sense because he's like, look, if we talked about, creating our own narrative Mm -hmm. why are you doing this to me now Mm -hmm. and now i understand i'm not saying he's right but i'm just saying i understand why he was so upset true and then i'm thinking is this how emily used that as a way to keep trying to make brendan seem controlling Mm -hmm. because she even asked him say hey watching that clip do you not see how controlling you are right and he was trying to say well, no i'm not trying to control you i, was, I thought we had an agreement mm-hmm. before this lady showed up and now i'm blindsided and you're the one sitting there looking like a battered spouse right you know and that's not appropriate for me to say i apologize but mm-hmm. that she's looking very distraught which makes dr pia think everything is brendan's fault which made all of us think mm-hmm. everything was brendan's fault very true very true now here's the thing they're about to go back out for their um, solo <laughs> couple with sit down with Kevin, right? And Emily's flipping Brennan off as they're walking to the stage. How childish, how old are you? You know what, I understand why he left. I don't blame him. I mean, just everything about Emily's energy, even on the after party, mm-hmm. all the after parties we saw with Emily, everything about her energy, we all are looking at her like, why would anybody mm-hmm. want to be with her? But in her mind, she is awesome at yeah. everything. By the way, um, Sanal says, do have to admit, after this reunion, I understand Brennan a little more. I still think he has ang- anger issues, though. Yeah, and I actually want to talk about that in a second because, um, you know, there, there's a part there. And because remember, he said he, once he realized they weren't a good match, he stopped trusting the process, right? Mm-hmm. And then they start getting into this thing and... and She's like, well, you, you would raise your voice, you would yell at me. And he's like, this is what she considers yelling. Here's the thing. In that moment, I went, you know what? We've never seen him raise his voice. And I went, I actually believe that he didn't raise his voice because one, most serial killers, at least on TV, never do. Um, they don't yell. And two, I don't think he yells. If he does, it's because he's flipped the lid and there's no holding back. It probably takes a lot to get there because, you know, they talk about his temper. His parents talked about that. And if right. that's the case, then there is that moment. But I don't think he ever got to that moment because he knew the cameras around. He's aware of the cameras very but, much. But that's what Emily was saying is that he would yell at her off camera mm-hmm. when they had their one-on-one conversations. That's when he would yell at her, be rude to her, talk down to her. Mm-hmm. That's what she said. Um, I believe at the uh, decision day mm-hmm. that he was doing all this stuff off camera. So, I'm glad he didn't do it on camera and hopefully he mm-hmm. he wasn't yelling. If he's telling the truth that she just interprets that yeah. as yelling, I see right. his point. But I can see why he's so frustrated with her and annoyed because by day two, three of the honeymoon is when he started to check out. Right. Now for him to blame the, the t- for him to say that the experts didn't give him what he wanted, I disagree with that. Kendra says Emily was drunk. Um... Drunk AF the whole season and mean. Sorry, Brennan. I thought it was you. <laughs> people, is, people are sliding. You defended Brennan a lot more than anybody else this season. Um, and I think people are starting to slide to your side. Sometimes I'm right. Sometimes. I mean, I mean. 
twice a day, the broken clock is right too. But I think majority of us, if if we all went to the bar right now and we yeah. saw Emily, are we gonna go sit and hang out and have a cocktail? Nope. nope. Are we gonna pull out our phones and just watch for the shit show to happen? Yeah. Oh yeah. We'll we'll wait yeah. for the upside down cartwheel with no panties on. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Cause that's what she does. This is we said this from the bachelorette party. That woman is not ready to be a wife. No. 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 At but all. She needs that's why she shouldn't have been on the show originally, because you can't be a wife if you've never been a girlfriend to somebody before. Right. How do you do that? And I think that's where a lot of Emily's struggle is. She's never been in a relationship, never mm. dealt with this. So maybe in her mind, if you disagree with me or call me out for something, you're right. yelling at me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Crystal K says, Brennan is still a serial killer to me, but Emily lacks accountability. Yes. All, most Four of the five women lack accountability. Right. Plain and simple. Um, <laughs> uh, Globe Hopper says, neither Emily nor Brennan should be in a romantic relationship right now. I kind of agree. Now, here's the interesting thing I saw, though. Emily says protective is a trigger word for her now. Remember when she said that? Mm hmm But did you see what the producers did? In the clip they played back, when Brennan said, well, when he said thing, 10 things, you ran down more than 10 things. One of the things she said she loved about Brennan, I love how you are protective of me and others. Mm-hmm. Yeah, weird. Make it make sense. But now she's triggered. Yeah. Did Did you see Pastor Cal's face as she's reading through her list? He's yeah. just like, okay. <laughs> he's like, Brendan, I get it. Jeez. <laughs> Wrap this up. We got. I got some sinning to do. Wrap this up. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> oh my God. I can't believe you said that. She likes to cheat. I <laughs> better should just has to choke the slap. <laughs> this is this is not ready to love. <laughs> Cause that would have been that would have been something that would have taken a whole other sense in this one. <laughs> we know we know what her answer would have been. So drunk. <laughs> it depends how many drinks I've had. Three beers, slapped, four shots. I'll do a little chokey chokey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like back to it. It's just bold. <laughs> oh boy. Nikki B says, hey, y'all should do a live on who wants to date Terrell? It could be speed dating style. If you don't find love, it would be hilarious. <laughs> wow, Nikki. I'm I'm glad that I I'm I'm glad that my my singleness can entertain you. <laughs> I'm glad that I can f help find some joy by getting rejected by a lot of women that don't know me or only watch the podcast and get rejected live on camera. <laughs> yeah, I'll do that. <laughs> I know you. And our subscribers would be cut in half after that episode. <laughs> I don't think so. I think people just really, you know, they might actually learn more about me and realize that I'm not as rigid as I might come across sometimes. Sometimes I'm just drinking, I'm talking about stuff, and I just say things, but. In the words of Maury Povich, and that was a lie. Yeah, yeah, no, I just, I just <laughs> say things sometimes, but I wouldn't do a speed dating round live on this new. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that might as well just sign up for Ready to Love or a reality show of some kind, no. <laughs> Talk about we could do it love is blind style. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, oh, by the way, Sinal says, not gonna lie, tell you do come off a of script. Not even strict, but script. <laughs> what have I said that makes me come across as strict? Your list. What no no. Stop that. What? I have never had a look. What is on my list? Let's play this game. You, you yeah, Nikki B started it. You're gonna add it on. Some finish it. What is on my What is on my list? <laughs> this is for a completely different way. <laughs> uh, first on the list, no braids. I, I said I'm not that into braids. Could somebody have braids? I would like them. Mm -hmm. Sure. We saw that on Ready to Love. There were people second on the, the list, no show. braids. Third on the yeah. list, no braids. Then uh, no wings. No, I didn't say you can't eat wings. I said there was somebody the way she ate wings. Mm -hmm. It was disgusting. You just got to eat them right. Okay, no talking. 
What? <laughs> <laughs> Don't go to Jay Sayso's comments no more. He's just <laughs> <laughs> gotta have a stage home. <laughs> Got to like my stage home. You don't have okay. to have one. You got to have a clean home. Mm -hmm. You can't. You can't be nasty. There's nothing wrong with that. No weaves. No, I've dated people with weaves. No combativeness. Who wants that? <laughs> <laughs> I like a girl that wants to fight me. <laughs> Girls with cats. I'm not a fan of cats. <laughs> now, would I not talk to somebody because they had a cat? No, not a fan. Now, if they have three, four mm -hmm. cats, mm -hmm. no. Um, have to know how to eat a steak. No. <laughs> Yo, I never said look. that. Where y'all getting this? Uh, no stuff no talking during sex? <laughs> <laughs> what? I never said that. I think y'all are just making us. Uh, now, what is in y'all's cups? Y'all are just making stuff up now at this no point. No heavy breathing. <laughs> <laughs> I never said any of these things. <laughs> no pop-ups. <laughs> well, we all agree on the pop-ups. So shoes off in the house. Okay, I made nope, that up. That's, yeah, that's, that's me. <laughs> that's Yanni's. I, I have my shoes on right now upstairs on carpet. Say, how they eat crawfish? No, it's don't ask him how to eat crawfish. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to teach you how to do it, but eat crawfish all day long. No parking in your driveway. You can always park in my driveway or in the garage. Once we get into a relationship in the garage, you nope. can park in there, close it in. No sitting on bathroom floors. Who wants to do that anyway? Exactly. OCD cleaning. No, I'm OCD enough for the both of us. Just can't be gross and nasty. <laughs> Nikki B adds to the list. No braids, no long nails, and no bat lashes. Not a fan of the bat lashes, and I'm not a fan of the super long nails. No. Me neither. I am, I, am, I'm the, I told my wife when, um, when we met, I'm like, yeah, I'm glad you didn't walk in here with some long nails, boy, because we wouldn't have had a second date. Yeah. She's like, stop lying. I was like, I'm dead serious. Dead ass. <laughs> 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 JC says no ghetto. <laughs> but ghetto don't like me. So that's fine. It's not like I have all these ghetto women <laughs> beating down my door. Not one ghetto person has ever been like, you know, Terrell's kind of cute. Th th this is funny. Terrell takes no accountability for his pickiness. He has an excuse for it all. Wow. <laughs> I just wanted to <laughs> wow, Zoe. That's funny. Yeah. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> now see um it's funny thing because all of a sudden they start throwing the stuff that for me to you like no dogs tara loves dogs thank you so yeah <laughs> oh my god i'm sorry that was just too much fun i couldn't pass that up i apologize i apologize everybody's asking what's the age range i don't know i'm 49 39 to like 50. Mm -hmm. maybe 51. so Here's this. Lisa says, now come to think of it, your list makes sense. See, this, this is why I brought it. I know you thought, I know you thought I did this just to have, to, 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 to have fun at your expense, but no, because I understand your list. I told him, I've known you forever. So I, I, I understand, like Marcy says, he has standards, lots of standards, and there's nothing wrong with that. Remember that, apparently, lady. Apparently, nothing apparently, wrong with that. apparently you can't be a guy with standards. You can, only, you can only be a woman with standards, but a guy has standards. Oh, he's he's picky, and he has a long list. My little little mini list of standards all of a sudden was this. <laughs> hey, one more thing. Nikki says you have to know how to nightgown him. <laughs> yeah. I, I've never been nightgown, so, you know, um, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god hilarious man look i can't wait for um part two of this reunion man this reunion is gonna be um it's gonna be good uh part two we see kevin really get emily who thought she could get off of keisha and then all of a sudden thinks she can try that with kevin he's like yeah hold up now i just told you and to that point heart dna says kevin and keisha should be hired as experts and they probably both like i don't need this <laughs> <laughs> I'll deal with this, the, the backside of this and be fine. That's actually an interesting thought. Keisha, definitely. I don't know if Kevin could be an expert, mm -hmm. but Keisha, because she gets some good advice on after party. So maybe, yes. Now, look, they're already, they're already it's already two thirds black experts. They're not going to do it again. They're going to make it all black experts. What do you think would happen? I don't know. 
I'm not the one that's worried about that. <laughs> maybe, maybe they have all black experts. The show will go faster and we can speed this thing up and get through it. <laughs> oh, it's supposed to start in November. It starts in February instead. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, Jesus, what happened? Uh, well, you know, <laughs> you know. <laughs> what happened was... <laughs> You know, K-Ross says, Keisha actually listens. So, yeah, um, and, and Kendra's right. They, they do need some new ones. I do think it's about time um, to, to kind of do that. So, we'll see. Um, we'll see how that kind of rolls. I don't think that's going to happen, but it would have been, been interesting. Um, Sedan's fan says, this was a season of Who the F Did I Marry? <laughs> yeah. Um, Globe Hopper said this about Emily. I'm not angry. I'm sad. And then proceeds to rage the entire show. Absolutely true. Do we yeah. do we have to ask this question um, when Michael comes on uh, CSG nine five four? I wonder who gets custody of Penelope in the split. <laughs> I mean, I think this should only be one. Whoever named her, yeah, owns her. I oh, think that that's that rule. I think that's the rule. Mm. Okay, okay, okay. Um, the uh, you you mentioned this before too about Emily and um, I mean Becca and Austin, right? Mm -hmm. um, crying while hugging at the end, really weird. I, I do after I mean just after everything that's happened and all of the uh things that were said not only just throughout the season the thing with the producer and everything said there just Michael I mean uh, Austin let it go mm -hmm. and just move on but doing that whole hugging thing and hugging it out mm -hmm. crying yeah why and all mm -hmm. that did was make Becca feel sad and I really like him yeah. you're playing with her emotions right let her go you hurt her mm -hmm. move on and let her heal it's a bad thing that some people do at times when somebody likes you more than you like them and then all of a sudden they decide they're moving on and you're like, wait a minute, I like that attention, come back. And as soon as they come back, you're like, oh, I don't want to see you anymore. <laughs> so it's a dangerous game to play, absolutely right. Yeah. It's like, oh yeah, this is why we broke up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, Natalie asked this question earlier, is it just me or did Emily refer to herself as a 10 a few times? She is did. Is she trying to convince us or herself? She did. And she's apparently the most positive person anybody ever knows. Hence the tens. Come on. Yeah. Proof. Yeah. <laughs> um, when we're talking about Claire and Cameron and Cameron saying that, you know, he forgot that she was there. Um, Nikki B says, I took that as he was comfortable. He forgot she was there. So we at least have one woman who understood what we were saying in that space. Um, and even as we explained it, then Michelle was like, really? Hmm. Still odd. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> And Kimba was like, nice try, jokers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Gloria said, hey, look, if we go back from the beginning, I said none of the couples would make it. And you were right. Yeah, mm -hmm. you were right. I, I didn't think so. I thought Michael and Chloe were going to be the saving grace of the show. And Michael, what's up, man? I know you're in the chat. Mm -hmm. But I thought they were going to be the saving grace of the show. But nope, we are 0 for 5. <laughs> 0 for 5, man. <sighs> well, look, I know I did see it come up a couple of times. Jocelyn, I saw you asked it. Um, when are we going to have Michael on? It'll be after. He can't come on before the season's over. And the season's not over till. let's see, we've got part two of the reunion. Does, I wonder if that includes where are they now? we got to get with him on that, too. I so, hope it doesn't. I really hope it doesn't. Because <laughs> I don't want to watch where are they now, because they're still going to be bitter, complaining about <laughs> each other. Another, uh, is it going to be another photo shoot? The guys this time. <laughs> <laughs> you know who got custody of Penelope? Austin. All right, I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> hey. <laughs> hey, by the way, Michael did say you shouldn't include where are they now. So hopefully after next week. So we'll do next week and then hopefully the week after. We have Michael on, and we'll do the same place, same time, same bat channel. And uh, then you get to ask him all those questions directly that you've been trying to slide to him in the uh, in the chat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right, we out of here, man. Yep. I'm Yanni Rude. And I'm Just Terrell. Hey, make sure you follow us at Yanni Rude, at Just Terrell, and at RGRT Pod. Yeah, send us some of your random thoughts, some of the bullshit you find online, and we'll talk about it on the show. It's the Regular Guys Random Thoughts Podcast. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>